Burbler. He's in his element. <laughs> it's just like nature. It's what we're all about. Wagons ho! <laughs> Have a look at that! Just when they think it's safe to come out. I guess in the end, that's probably why we all go fishing. amazing thing that what took Captain Cook a number of years to do we can do in a single day via jet travel. The modern way, absolutely magnificent. And you can tell, out of the cock, 5.30 this morning, but as the sun goes down on the top end of Australia, we're steaming south into the very heart of the Gulf of Carpentaria. I'm excited, I hope you are, because I can tell you people, wherever you're viewing, all around the globe, it doesn't get any better than this for me. I'm excited, and I tell you what, I've got a feeling in my water, folks. It's gonna be a great trip. Half of the real joy in fishing is the expectation of you never ever know when your day's going to change. I do a lot of my thinking out here and I can really, really recommend it. Get out of the office, have a look at this magnificent land of yours called Australia. But I tell you what, it is food for the soul, I can tell you now. Now, something is absolutely snaffle. It is not going to be a world record fish, but it's a nice way to open our account up here. Come on, around you come. And look, I'm a great fan of David Attenborough. So David Attenborough is just one of my all-time heroes. And I can tell you, he is right. Sit back and take in nature, because everything in nature has a reason. Now, this will be a small trevally, a nice trevally it is. No doubt about that, but it's a lovely, lovely way. Come here, mate, we want to show you on television. It's a lovely, lovely way to start our trip in the Gulf of Carpentaria. And folks, I don't want to be blasé at all, but there's better things to come. But look at that mouth. I've seen that on a man who's got a fishing show somewhere. Folks, since 1956, when the Olympics were in Melbourne and I sat on the end of the Mordialic Pier, I've been taught to take notice of what's happening around you. I've noticed a few birds just starting to look. But when it eventually happens, the birds are your camera. They're your television set. It's easy, folks. The works goes out of it for you. They'll tell you where the fish are. Have a look at that.
So we've got a big school of queenies here. And we're going to put that little blue and white slice in between them and bring it back and it should be almost instant like that. Now, I speak about this a lot, I really do. The basics of fishing have not changed for me in nearly 50 years on the water. And boy, am I waterlocked. But quite basically, if you find the fish and the fish are hungry and you give them something that they're interested in eating, I tell you what, folks, it's like sausage rolls and lollies at a kid's party. If you put the lettuce and the good sort of salads up one end, they will be just so lonesome. If you put all the good stuff down the other end, and my goodness me, the old rugrats, they'll get down and have a real go. Queenfish are the absolute sport fishing heroes of Northern Australia. A lot of people call them skinnies, and I've seen these up to six and a half kilo, and they're serious, serious fish. They're not bad to eat, but as a sport fish, they are absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Gregory. And mate, off you go, away you go. Okay, let's now have just a little bit of a Rexy lesson. This particular lure is a new one I'm working on for Kmart. It is called the Rexy Fishless Lure. And what happens is, how silly is that, kids? I lost my hooks. Is it Rexy a duffer? Sorry about the water on the lens. Now, we've come over here and I'm going to put my glasses on and I cannot emphasise too much about the glasses. You've heard me for 13 years speak about the sun, the rays off the water, and more importantly, if a lure happens to come back and hit me in the eye, well, you've got no tomorrow. So we'll go in the middle of there, and before it hit the bottom, a fish had a go at it, and he's coming up now, and he's got it. And it is as simple and as easy as that. I'll tell you what, folks, isn't this better than sitting in your office? And during the school holidays, wouldn't it be nice to bring mum and dad up here? I'm going to make a recommendation to John Howard, our Prime Minister at the minute. Johnny? It's Rexy, remember me? Get the kids up here. Cancel all passports. Get Australians in their own continent. Just showing the world what great fishing we have. It's not so much the catching of fish, but it is the attachment to nature. Another skinny, just a sport fishing hero, hero of these tropics. Go on, mate, barbless hooks, and he should almost just flick off instantly like that. So there you are, a humble little lure that will cost you about three or four Australian dollars. 50 pound in the old scale trace. I'm using a bit of the new braid line, but I tell you what, four or five kilo line, and you are in business. And it is a matter of casting out over the top of some feeding fish, bringing it back in an erratic action, and the rest should be history. The only one reason this lure won't go off is that I'm not on the fish because look at that up there where those birds are. Greg, I think we might go up there because there's only one reason that lure didn't go off because the fish were not there. Gee whiz. Oh. Yes, well done. These are a mighty good little fish, aren't they? Aren't they what? Jump out of the water, readily take any sort of lure, do. easy to get them in, release them, take a photograph, get another one. Yeah, good Your client fish. Food. Good client fish. Oh, look at that griper oh, come up. Griper. Look at that. And this fish here, here he comes again. Oh, he's got it. Hey, mate, you've got my rod. Hey, mate, hey, mate, please give me my rod back. Hey, mate. Mate, you can have the fish! You can have... Water over me, water over you people. Seriously, a 300 pound groper coming out of a magnificent pristine river to say good day to us on our international fishing show.
Rex and the boys have been out the back of the boat here in the Jackson River. They've been catching plenty of queen fish. They're almost due back for lunch any moment now. We've got a bit of steak marinated on the barbecue. That's been done in Asian spices and herbs. We're going to be mixing that steak with the vermicelli noodles and a heap of different vegetables. Lots of Asian marinade and herbs and spices in that again. That should be absolutely fantastic. And I tell you what, for the middle of nowhere, they're going to enjoy that. Lunch time. When I first came up here about seven years ago, one thing that was quite unique was the beach fishing. Along the west coast of the Gulf of Carpentaria, there are just absolute hundreds of kilometres of beach, and you never know what you're going to get. This giant herring, this queenfish. At this time of the year, just coming into our spring here in Australia, there's a possibility of a barramundi, and Greg, a lot of our viewers, particularly who don't know the pattern of barramundi just expect us to fish in the mangroves for barramundi, but they actually see going critters, don't they? They are. They all come out of the rivers to breed along the coastal foreshores and rocky foreshores, beaches and flats. I don't have a complete understanding of them, and I think anyone who says that they do is telling a few porkies. Right? But do you ever want to completely understand them? So, folks, Gregory is spotting and Rex is shooting the line. Let's hope it all comes together. I can feel a good segment coming on. We've got a lot, a lot of bait down here. And we're gonna see if we can just get something back in there. There's something swirling, so perhaps our rattles and our little shiny lure will do something. There's some nervous bait down there, so we're just gonna see what happens. It's where supper is. If they I tell you what, if they're fair dinkum, they should be somewhere along here. Mr. Barry Mundy, Mr. Barry Mundy, would you like to be on my show? Yes, sir, you would. <laughs> oh, a Barry Mundy, there he goes. Well, <clears throat> it has been worth waiting for, I can tell you now. And just to see that big cloud and the balls of bait in there. They turn side on, little bit of a flash, silver flash. You get that little rattling spot down there going brrr, brrr. Let it fall back down and the flash attracts these magnificent predators. Look, I think they're my all time favorite fish. If I travel the world for the rest of my life, I don't believe that I could find a fish that means so much to me. It's an Australian icon. This fish might even be above the size limit, there's no doubt about that. He's a nice young fish. Look at that young fish. He's probably two and a half, three years of age. Magnificent fish. Small, sleeky head. Magnificent torso. That is the predator of Australia. The Barra Mundi on Sunday in the top end. How good is that, folks? See you next time, son. Oh, and away he goes. You can pick up through Brendan's lens that little bit of sand dropping off into what appears to be a gutter. And what we'll do is we'll go into that wind, make sure we don't get an overcast, a backlash, and bring it back with a flicking motion like that. Ah! Oh! 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 Barramundi! <laughs> I knew that would work, Mr. Barra. <laughs> He's gone under there. Mate, you were under there. I want you to come out and look at those eyes. 
Oh, those beautiful, beautiful eyes. Just magnificent. The, look at them shining there in the late afternoon sun. Absolutely magnificent. Come on, come out of there. The bait in there, folks. But I tell you what, there is more action down there than at the MCG on the last Saturday in September. Now, I might go this way here. I'm starting to produce my own show, heaven forbid. That is a beautiful looking fish. Have a look at that. Have a look at that, Gregory. Is that just sensational? Wonderful little fish, aren't they, Rexy? It just must be something about those spots that they like. You know, I don't know whether it's the flash or whether it's the, uh, the noise or whatever, but gee, what a beautiful example. This, uh, Pass me your rod. Thanks, mate. This system is going all right, isn't it? Tell you what, when you can, uh, when you can see fish like that, this system is going all right. This is what it's all about, catching barramundi of all sizes in the top end of Australia. And away you go, mate. He's pretty happy about that. And I hope you are too. Got half the Sahara Desert on the lens. Water and sand, bloke can't fish in this. I'm going back for a coldie. Sir. Rex Hunt. Greg Hunt. Greg Hunt. Haven't seen you in the family tree. I tell you what, it's nice to see you. Where are you up to today, Mr Hunt? We're going to King Island in the middle of Bass Strait for some serious fishing. King Island? And uh, how many bags have you got, Mr Hunt? 54. 54? Okay, I'll uh, check you in. How many days are you going for? Uh, a day and a half. A day and a half. Okay, well, I'll start checking you in. And Greg, can I just tell you, we're travelling light. Patrick, that was a magnificent flight aboard oh. the famous Rex Airlines, mate. Welcome to King Island, Rex. A couple of firsts today for me. The first flight uh, on Rex, and the first uh, time that Rexy's been here at King Island. So uh, I'm sure you'll really enjoy yourself. Well, it looks absolutely fantastic. King Island has certainly come a long way since Captain Deadford first sighted the island in 1797. About 1,400 people call King Island home, and the majority of them live in or around the main town of Curry. But it's food that King Island is renowned for. From the magnificent array of cheeses that the King Island dairy produces, to some of the best beef I have ever consumed, folks. And finally, it's bounty from the sea, the rock lobster or crayfish, and not forgetting the local sea elephant oysters. One of the island's biggest exports is kelp. Bull kelp, in fact. It is harvested off the beaches, then air-dried for two weeks on these racks. It is then broken down and dried for four hours in this huge dryer, granulated at the other end and shipped overseas for further processing. This island has so much to offer visitors. From its pristine beaches and lagoons, surfing, bushwalking, diving, golf, and yes, of course, folks, fishing, just to name a few. But we need the local info, folks, and I'm told there's only one place to go. The main street of Curry, folks, very, very busy. There's no doubt about that. And the thing about it is, I don't know what's going on here. I've heard a lot about it, so you've got to get the local information. These people say the Perrys 
is the hub and hive of information on the island, and they've got everything you might need in their shop. I might check them out. Rex. Rex. Rex, I heard you were heard or you're in our territory. Welcome to King Island. Well, I tell you, people outside said that you have everything in this shop. But I tell you what I'm really proud about, folks, is that, Terry, you do the same filing system as I've done for 40 years. It's called the loose leaf filing system. But you come in here and you say, do not touch anything because then you won't be able to find it. That's right. Now, the lady across there who makes the best curried pies in curry told me that you've got everything. We have. I can't we, believe, uh, I can't believe in such a small... <laughs> well, it's like a rabbit, Warren. Mm. Can I test you out? You can test me out, Rex, yes. Uh, chainsaw. Chainsaw, yes, we've got those. We've got those. Chainsaws. Chainsaws, yes. I don't believe yes, it. Can you show yes. me your chainsaws, please? We can show you some chainsaws. Yeah. Yes, we can. Brush cutters for the home garden, for the serious people. Picnic sets. Picnic sets and the mowers, all different mowers. Seats for the barbecue. Vacuum cleaner. George Foreman grill. Paintings. Prints all through there. All oh my nice prints. goodness yes. me. Yes. Oil for the uh, brush cutter. Earmuffs. Bikes for the boys Bikes. and girls. Televisions. Yes. Sleeping, Sleeping bags. bags. And tents. Clocks. Batteries. Toasters, frying pans, cordless jugs, banquet five frying pans, goggles, snorkels. It keeps getting better, mate. A swimming pool. Watches, you want to buy the watch? Here we go, here we go. Are you even selling an eight pound stuffed trout? Fishing gear. And Rex Hunt Heavy Bay Offshore Rig. Have a look at that, folks. I finally made it overseas, King Island. Tennis rackets there. Tennis rackets. OK, we can go diving if we want to. Wetsuits. Bicycle bits and pieces. I can repair a puncture. Yeah. I can vacuum. Well, I do that at home now. You've got a washing machine there. You want a washing machine? a washing machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about a fridge or a, a dryer? Fridge, a dish? freezer, a dryer. We've even got a dishwasher. Made a hairdryer. You and, I don't, you and I actually go to the same hairdresser. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. believe it. A chainsaw. Yeah, but it's are. a second-hand yeah, one, are. mate. That's no good to me. And there's Paul there playing with it. You see? You've even got your son. G'day, Paul. This is Paul the chainsaw sharpener. Have a look at the chainsaws. My yes, goodness there me. We, are. we finally found the chainsaws. Oh, it's a bit of fun, folks. Now, this morning, you've invited myself and the crew to go fishing. What have you got in mind? Uh, we'll go up to Folks Bay if the weather permitting. I think it will be. It looks yep. as if it's abating out there now and it looks, yep. looks quite promising. Uh, there should be some salmon there. Nice salmon. They've been getting you know, salmon three to seven pound up there. Yeah. And uh, there's a nice lot of mullet there at the moment. There's the time of the year for the mullet to be in close and they're there. Yeah. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> He's confident. <laughs> Tell you what, Terry, there's no shortage of wind on King Island. No, we're in a little windy spot here, aren't we? That's right. <laughs> isn't this magnificent? Right Open it. Uh, well, Rex, Terry. There, you are. there you are. Look, there's uh, some places have it on the notice boards. We have it on a mountain on King Island, and that's your welcome to King Island, and everyone's saying welcome. Kiss me, Rex. How about that? That's fantastic. How about that? Now that looks okay to me, folks. Yes, there it is, Rex, there it is. Magnificent. Well, folks, this is Folks's Bay on the western seaboard of King Island in the middle of Bass Strait, about in line with, say, Skeens Creek or Apollo Bay on the Victorian southern coast. So you know where we are now? If I was going to make the decision, mate, that is our hole. We'll go with you on that one. That's our hole, folks. Folks, I just need to set the scene here. We're just coming out of two or three days horrendous gales from the southwest, and the barometer is on the rise. Just starting to see little patches of blue on the horizon, and that's what I call the dissolving cloud syndrome that many of you who know me 
know that I think is important because it means that the barometer is rising. Now I've gone for a specialist outfit that I use on Victorian, New South Wales and Queensland beaches. It's a rod of about 11 or 12 foot long in the old scale, very light. I've got pretty light line, 8 to 10 pound in the old scale and I'm looking for a show. I've got small garfish hooks on and I'm looking for a yellow eye mullet or a small salmon to give me an indication there's a bit of a food chain going on out there. We can get the burly in and Bob's your uncle. On the other hand, Terry has gone straight for the jugular. He's got the waders on, he's got the big 90 mile surf outfit that you would have seen 20 or 30 years ago and he's going for the big blokes. I'm on a new piece of terra firma fishing unknown waters. It doesn't get much better than that for the old bearded fisherman. I think a lot of people around the world dismiss a fishing area saying there's nothing here. Your eyes are a very good indication of what's happening from your perspective, but the best set of eyes has got feather around them. Now, there's two or three terns and seagulls here that have come in and are starting to look. Now, as soon as those types of birds accumulate over the top of a hole and get very, very agitated or very excited, we'll know something's happening. There it comes. Look at that. Woo. That's a good start, Terry. That's a lovely mullet. That's a mullet, yes, that's a mullet. And do you usually get them before you get a salmon? Well, they run together, yes. They run they together. They do, yes. The well. yellow eye mullet. My oh, goodness gracious tougher. me, I just had a bit of a... You got a bite? That's it. Oh, he has to. Oh, I had a bite just then. I Look tell you what. <laughs> I tell you what, you learn every time I was winding in to check my bait. Terry just says, oh, I've got a little bit of a mullet here. I reckon that was no more... Oh, gee whiz. No <laughs> more than 15 to 20 metres out there. Michael will show you. Out there, that's where that wave is. That is where I had my rod. Now, something has grabbed it and it looks like to me it may well. It was a salmon. When I say it was a salmon, it jumped out of the water and went back in. So, he is well and truly hooked. It's not a bad salmon either. Now, have a look at that rod. Now, that rod is designed to take the shock of that fish. And he is break the just <laughs> swimming, Terry. He is swimming beautifully. Look, up and against there. And, oh, it's a nice salmon. It is a beautiful salmon. Now, I'm going to just bring him in there now and bring him towards me. And here he comes. <laughs> That's a good effort, that one, Rex. That's a good effort. Oh, look at that. Look at How that. about that, mate? That is My a nice-looking salmon. Yeah, it is so, isn't it? Now, at Folks yep. Bay, would that be an average salmon? Yes, it would. Uh, at this time of the year, yes. I reckon yes. he's, what, two and a half, nearly three pound about, in the old scale. three pound, I'd say, yes. So, he's a nice looking fish, isn't for it? a summer Thanks. salmon mm. on a beach in the middle of Bass Strait, I reckon that's OK. It is. Now... They put up a good fight, don't they? I saw a sign in a paddock on the way down here. And you know what it said? Kiss me, Rex. Yes. <laughs> no, no, we won't do that. I'll tell you what. I'll kiss it for you. And I'll put him go. back into Western Bass Strait. That's not a bad start, is it? So our burley is starting to work. A little bit of bread from the bakery. A little bit of tuna oil just mixed up with a few pallets. He gets a mullet, Terry. And we get an Australian salmon. Beautiful Australian salmon. This is the eastern subspecies and they'll lose their spots and become almost black in the back. And if you go into a pub anywhere along the east coast of Australia, they'll talk about the black back salmon. This bloke's a speckledy uh, back at the moment, but what a nice fish. See you later, mate. And away he goes. Got another one, Terry. Jarek, got another one. Yeah, another one just hit another mullet. Absolutely magnificent. You know, 
Pull him in, mate. I got a uh, a lot of respect for these fish because I think mm. so many people in Australia catch mullet and brim and get hooked on fishing. Yes. Now yes. they're a beautiful, beautiful, clean fish. And you see there, he's lovely and silver. He's got beautiful yellow eyes. And he's a lucky fish. Because I can tell you what, the whole Perry family loves eating mullet. And you ate your first mullet here in 1937. Probably, yes. I'll get yes. him back, mate. Right. I'll get him back first. Okay, get him back while you are. You came here when you were still sucking on a dummy, so I suppose That's you can right. re be referred to as a local. Just about. Just about. You call this island home. Yes. It is a unique place in the world, and so few people know about it. That's right. Why? Mm. I don't know why, really. Uh, I suppose means of getting here yeah. would be one of the things. Yeah. Uh, they can't hop on a boat with their car and this sort of no, thing. No, they can't. Yeah. They've got to hop. Send, if they do send their car, it has to come on a boat and then they've got to hop on a plane. Well, mate, I, I did the right thing and I'm trying to get the whole joint going. I bought my airline here for you, mate. That's Rex. good. Mm. So, yeah, that's good. That's fantastic, good. Isn't it? Yes, it is. Mate, you yeah. are a legend. Yeah. You might go and catch another fish. <laughs> Try. It's Try. not bad, folks. 1937. He was throwing his dummy at his mother and father. <laughs> And he hasn't left here since. And you know what? This will mean nothing to the people in the Northern Hemisphere. But he's a Collingwood supporter. <laughs> <laughs> he's seen two flags, 58 and 90. <laughs> and he missed the one in 90 because the windsock blew down and there was no power. <laughs> <laughs> That's a blue bait. It's a common bait fish here in Australia, and we catch them and salt them, and we put them on like that. Head first, because that's how most predatory fish like salmon take their prey. Half hitch around the tail, and that's it. Now, usually a lot of people do something to make the fish bite. I'm gonna sing them a song. Who sung it? Paul Anker or Jack and the Cocky Scratches? I don't know who it was, but it was Oh, one last fish, oh baby, one last fish, that is my only wish. I can catch that last fish, I don't know where I am. Oh, 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 give me one last fish. Fair enough. You got Terry? Oh, I've got a crab, Rex. That's a crab. That's, that's it. Yes. Uh, what do you mean that's it? That's it. The uh, the fish will move on, uh, waiting for the sharks to come and get them. I tell you what, I learnt that a long time ago along the 90 mile beach. Mm -hmm. I think you and I both had hair in those days. <laughs> yeah. That when the crabs were there, the yep. fish weren't because yep. the fish eat the crabs and particularly the gummy sharks. That's a sand crab. It is. It's yep. a sand crab there, folks. Have a look at that. Now he's going to grow a lot bigger than that because the sand crabs do grow a lot bigger. I just had a bit of a bite there too. I tell you what, I've got a fish. You wouldn't there read about is, it. There he is, Rex. Now, got one. Yep. now I've got, oh, actually got, got two, two fish. <laughs> I've got two fish. Just hold that, thanks, Terry. Yes, all right, got it. Now, these are yellow eye mullet. And Terry said as soon as the sun comes out, and the sun is trying to come out here, there you go, mate. And we'll give your mate a bit of a kiss, hey? Look at that beautiful, beautiful fish. Now, the yellow eye mullet, he's everywhere, particularly all over Australia. And he is the pork of the sea. He's like a vacuum cleaner. He sifts through all the sand and he gets all the nourishment out of it. And the best thing is when you clean them, get that black bit out of the lining of the stomach and they are fantastic. They're quite good out of the ocean. Why People say, they? oh, I wouldn't eat a mullet. The fact is they haven't prepared it properly. Right. I'm gonna put that fish back and away he goes. And look at him back into Western Bass Strait. I tell you what, Terry, it has been an absolute pleasure for me to come down here to Folks Bay and seeing that I talk a lot to the folks down that camera. If it's Folks Bay, the folks can come here. That's right, yes. And do yes. yourself a favour, folks. Go to Dorothy and Terry Perry's uh, shop and spend a week there and you still won't find what you want. <laughs> but it's marvellous, it's sensational, mate. You are a star. Thanks, thanks for being Thank on Rexy's show. And thanks to everyone at King Island, you lovely people. Ha <laughs> ha!
Welcome to the show, folks. This is part two of our sortie to the top of Australia aboard Tropic Paradise, our mothership for a week here on the west coast of the Gulf of Carpentaria. In the early morning, you never know what you're going to hook up here. I think down there we might come across some queenies, perhaps a giant herring, or oh, definitely some golden trevally. Folks, fasten your seatbelt. We're in for the ride of your life, folks. My goodness me, I think I might have hooked an outboard motor. <laughs> Thank you, mother, for the rabbits. The old bearded burbler is in his element. <laughs> it's just like nature. It's what we're all about. Wagons ho! Yes, in the end, that's probably why we all go fishing. Folks. So one word that comes to my mind is power. And there's only one word to describe what I'm feeling at the moment. Only one word. Absolutely magnificent. After all of this time, I never ever tire of this. Because number one, I love fishing. I love the environment. But you know what? They reckon I'm a, well, they reckon I'm a Samson fish short of the continental shelf, but I really am. I can feel you sitting back there saying, I wish I was up here. I wish I was with Rexy. Just seeing nature at its very, very best. And that's what I get out of it. I've got as much drag on this reel as the rod will take. Is when the rod is loaded up just like that, and Brendan will show you, if you loaded that up anymore, it will snap. Now, when that happens, kids, don't pull. Just allow the rod to sit there and the fish to tire. Although I have a sneaking suspicion, folks, that this fish is just sitting in the current saying, what is this? I've got a bit of lolly in my teeth, you know what I mean? This is a very, very big and powerful fish. And I just feel totally committed now to get this fish in to show you just what a tiny little artificial fly made of fur and feather around about oh, eight to nine centimetres long at the most, can catch a fish over a metre in, uh, in length. And I'm levering the fish while I've still got a bit of stretch in the fly line. Not a lot of stretch in the backing because it's like braid. And when I get him to ease up, I'll charge down and I'll get some more line back on the reel. The reel at this stage is doing a good job, but the rod is the thing that's really starting to tire this fish out. There's a fish down here in the shallows. It is, it is a golden trevally of serious proportions. He's got big, big rubber lips. I tell you what, if you wet his lips, you can stick him to the side of a bus. And come down, mate. Oh. Greg, you do this for a living, son. I do this for a holiday. What do you think I should do now? Well, you just do a better job than this, Rex. You're doing bloody well. Get him up in the shallows here. I'll go in and try and get him by the tail. Right. And we'll have a good look at him. But that's a magnificent fish. Isn't it a magnificent fish? Wow. I just, I just cannot panic here. I see so many people, they see a fish and they just want to get it in the boat. And this would be 99% of the times, Gregory, where your clients lose fish because... Most definitely. They've come from a law firm in Sydney or they've come up from an office in Melbourne, they spent all the hard money and they say, oh, look at the size of this fish, I don't want to let him go. But you do have to let him go. These are powerful creatures. They get too excited at the end. You just put on, like you're fighting that fish now. If you had 10 kilo line, I would estimate you were probably putting nine and a half kilos of pressure on that yep. fish the whole time, like you're supposed to, to land yep. a fish. 
and when you see it you just go that little bit extra too much and it's quite often just that too much and you lose that beautiful fish but that's not going to happen with this one Should be happy with that, Rexy. Look at that. Oh, wow. With a little fly in his mouth. Oh, wow. Come on, mate. Isn't he just magnificent? Look at those rubbery lips. Now, I did actually push that barb down, so that should... Look, it just came out just like that. The barb came down. That is a magnificent fish. I'll stand to the sun for a photograph, do you think? I don't oh, want to take it, you do well. that. Of course it will. It is a privilege to come here and catch these fish, and it's a more of a privilege for me to be in your living room. And I simply say, thank you very much. Come on, mate. Come on. We're gonna get you going, mate. We're gonna get you going. I feel his tail, he wants to go, actually. He wants to go. There he goes, look at that. Absolutely magnificent.